So I had a, another good idea after the collapse of my solar array. And this one's an actually good idea. Instead of rebuilding the whole uh, array that I collapsed stupidly upon myself, well, almost on me, I decided that I would put nine panels up here so that I can minimize the amount of array that I have to rebuild. I'm using this little flashing roof mount from Signature Solar. I highly recommend those guys. I'll have to do a review on them at some other point based on my experiences. I've ordered a lot of stuff from them. But anyway, here you see that I'm using a combination of a tappy tap method with a uh, stud finder. The uh, rafter is pretty easy to, to, to find with this tap method. I eventually got the hang of it where I didn't even need the stud finder, but it just makes you feel better when you can kind of find a few holes where there's no nails on the shingles and, you know, the nails were driven into the uh, uh, the, the rafter from the sheathing. So it, it's just a little bit of extra confirmation, which was nice. If you're the kind of person that pays close attention, you'll probably notice that I'm not really mounting these mini rails conventionally. At least the two in the middle here on the top. Uh, they should be mounted uh, kind of vertically going with the slope of the roof, not horizontally as you see there. But I was only going to put up, I think, six panels, so I didn't have enough rails. I'm kind of doing a mid uh, clamps where I should really be doing end clamps there. But it felt like it was supported close enough, so I'm going with it. But I wouldn't recommend it. That's where my battery actually died, which is actually a good segue because, bada bing, you know, I'm kind of... <laughs> a lot more done if only it was that easy i decided i'd talk a little bit about how i'm mounting these these are all in a series uh configuration because my inverter can handle uh, like 500 volts open circuit so in case you want to know more about how i came up with this map that chart is actually from my inverter manual you can see there the uh, max open circuit was 500 volts. Uh, there is my panel information. So each panel is 40.56. Uh, and that kind of represents, if you just go from the negative to the positive, that's the max voltage of each panel. So, for example, in, in series configuration, you're daisy chaining them together. So all of those voltages get added up cumulatively over the course of nine panels. Um you do have to take into consideration your max temperature. I'm kind of throwing these numbers out here fast, but you can go online and this is probably the most important thing you need to do. The open circuit voltage gets worse. Uh, in other words, higher, the colder temperatures get. So you need to look at your max temperature for your area. You need to do that calculation. So that way, even under worst case conditions, you can see that I'm still under my max PV array open circuit voltage. So you're within the safety margins there. Uh, you can see the panels, you know, my, my circuit can only handle 18 amps. My maximum short circuit right there is the other safety consideration. So I could actually not do even two of these panels in parallel because that would be 20, you know, it'd be over that 18 amp limit. So you really need to pay attention to these specs if you're ever looking at configuring an array. It's, it's pretty simple, but it's just a few things you need to look at. So the reason I care so much about this open circuit voltage and why I want it so high is because eventually I'm going to need to run these solar panels. The, the wiring for them is going to be about 500, maybe even 1,000 feet away from my home, probably closer to five or 600. But you can see here with a voltage drop calculator, the, the biggest consideration is your current. That is where they call it I squared R losses. Your, your biggest factor for losses comes at the square of the current. If I have, say, 10 of these together, but I want to configure them in any other way other than series, I would have to parallel some of them. And then that really starts to increase the amperage. That's going to be a lot less efficient. So that's why you have to have the bigger wire size, because then you are having more amps flow through that line versus if I am keeping them at 500 volts, or, well, 400 volts in this case, um, because the STC is what you use for the safety calculations. The NOCT down there at the bottom side, that's more of a, hey, that's what's realistically going to happen when you have, a, you know, current, the IMP there and the VMP or the P max, that is pretty much I ideal typical conditions. So on a side note, if you're ever comparing solar panels, one good thing to do is you can look at the maximum power at NOCT 
and compare that to the maximum power at uh, the standard test conditions, a lot of these panels, for example, will say, hey, this is a 400 watt panel, but not all 400 watt panels are made exactly the same. Should I go with this one and this one? They're roughly the same wattage. They're roughly the same amp. You know, they, they meet your same specs as far as volts and amps. But for example, this one, 295 divided by 370 is almost 80%. The, the point is you can look at that and see which one's going to get more power over the normal you know usage of the panel so with all of that said let's continue on with a little bit of a, a symphony that i created here in uh, the wonders of editing i think this is pretty fun but i'll just yeah So that pretty much does it for the job up there on the roof. My wife kind of helped me get down as she was learning the, the tractor control so she wouldn't dump me on the ground. The rest of the video is just a pretty simple uh, crimping MC4 connectors. That stuff is pretty simple. I, I tried to actually, <laughs> that's a horrible shot. I tried to kind of show how to do it, but I just did a really bad job. But here we are just turning on the panels and somehow the rest of the video footage got cut. I'm not sure what happened. It's gone. I, I was in the middle of transferring computers and do a little bit. I, I guess the last little bit got truncated or something there. So I don't really get to show you the finished product. This is actually a pretty good uh, final shot here. I, you know, I think maybe I should do a review there of the, uh, I forget what that's called. It's called a, a brand called Solar Assistant. Uh, and it basically uses a Raspberry Pi that I bought an external a little display there for so I can get some good information and tracking and data about my solar panels since I am off grid and I don't have an internet connection out there. So I don't really have a, a history of statistics without uh, trying to get into it. These the, the panel software on the inverters isn't great as far as all of those data and the metrics. So it's really nice to be able to see on a graph. This is how much PV I had over the course of the day. You can see that little yellow uh, curve. So you can see what it looks like in the winter uh, compared to in the summer. It's going to be a lot bigger and flatter and longer than that. Uh, and then you can see my load. That's the blue graph overlaid on top of the, the yellow graph there. And then, of course, I don't have any grid out there. But if I did, it would show that on the graph as well. But it's a really, actually, really great software for being able to just show my wife, like, she can go out there and, uh, hey, the battery's at 80%, I can charge our electric vehicle. You know, she knows some of those numbers, and it, it makes it really easy for her without having to do any math or think about it. But anyway, I, I'll stop talking about that now because that's a different review, and I think I'm done. So I do hope you all have a happy new year. Well, by the time this video gets published, it'll be... <laughs> probably a few days after that so happy belated new year and good luck with uh yeah everything resolutions and whatnot that you might be doing uh yeah different people have different opinions on those and i'll stop talking because i could just talk even longer about uh how stupid some new year's resolutions are anyway it's a great plan to try to change and become more healthy i'm not saying that's not good but anyway I'm going to stop talking because I've talked long enough. I hope you all have a wonderful, yeah, bye.